Hi, I'm The Mitten, and you're listening to The Mitten on Knitten. Thanks for tuning in. I'd like to welcome everybody to my first episode of The Mitten on Knitten. Um, my goal is to do one podcast a week uh, for the six months between now and Rhinebeck in October. Uh, Rhinebeck is the biggest fiber festival that I attend, and I look forward to it all year. I put together all sorts of uh, skeins for competition and knit up pieces um, to get judged so I can mostly see how I'm doing with my spinning and my knitting, but also because I like ribbons, and uh, I've I've won a few in my day, so uh, I just need to stay on track, though, and, and I don't like waiting to the last minute to get everything done, so I thought that by having a podcast where I was talking about what I was doing every week, it would help me stay focused and stay on target. Um, and have things done in a in a nice and timely fashion, and I'm not rushing at the last minute like it's Christmas Eve, and I have a whole sweater to knit. Um, so that's why I decided to go ahead and do the podcast, and I I hope you all enjoy it and uh, have fun. So that's enough of the loose threads. Uh, now let's see what's fitting for the mitten. What I'm wearing this week. Um, this week I've been wearing my Rhinebeck sweater from 2015. I haven't started my 2016 sweater yet, by the way, so that should be fun. But um, I, last year I knit up a lovely lemongrass green cardigan, a uh, custom made to fit um, by Amy Herzog, and it's a great pattern, and it fit me really well when I first started knitting it, but I did lose a bit of weight, so it's gotten a little bigger, and then I spilled stuff all over it, so washed it, and Mr. Mitten helped me wring it out, and it got a lot bigger. So I'm I'm still wearing it. It's not that horribly big. It is more of a Saturday around the house sweater than it is a go to the office sweater, but it is so warm and comfy, and it's been very chilly this um, spring. So I've been... Uh, I've been wearing it to the office as well. That along with hand-knit socks all week long, and of course my Jared Flood Guernsey Guernsey scarf, um, which is uh, not just a scarf, it's also my pillow for when I'm sleeping on the train. So that's what's been fitting for the mitten. This week the mitten's knitting socks. I've got two pairs of socks on the needles this week. I've got Mr. Mitten's huge, gigantic socks, um, which are a nice blue-green, under-the-sea kind of color, uh, alpaca. And they're coming along. I'm only working on them uh, during the NPR show, so that gets me three hours of knitting on those a week. Um, But they're just so gigantic and so huge. Um, I'm at the heel flap, and I consider that a bit of a victory. Um, But I have a feeling they won't be done for months. And then, of course, I'm knitting myself a pair of socks. Um, This is a wool mysa uh, in lovely shades of orange, burnt orange, and uh, burgundy and grays. And uh, I'm just really enjoying them. Simple toe-up, um, two-at-a-time socks on, on circular and magic loop. And on um, this pair, I decided to put the um, peacock's eye pattern all the way down the base of the foot from the ball of the foot and continue up the heel because I think it's going to give a little bit of extra padding and make them um, very comfortable. So that's what I'm knitting. What's on the wheel? Well, I have my fourth two-ounce portion of the white cream merino that I'm spinning up for Rhinebeck, and that's going to be for the um, competitive item. Uh, It's going to be for a scarf. I'm hoping that I'll get um, over between 800 and 1,000 yards of two-ply out of it, and um, so far I've been getting about... Uh, 
200 yards out of each 2 ounce um, portion. This is the fourth one, hopefully the last one. And then I, I still have the brown merino um, stashed away. And uh, if I need to break that out to uh, stretch the yarn out further, then I'll do some type of pattern at either end of the scarf. But the scarf is the competition piece for Rhinebeck this year, and that's what I'm spinning for. Um, just for fun, I have some hip strings in lovely uh, Gerber daisy oranges and, and bright, bright uh, yellows and oranges. And it's just, um, you know, you makes your heart sing in early spring when there's no color about. Um, so I'm spinning that, and I'm getting about uh, 10 wraps per inch out of it. So that's kind of cool. And then I have one more spin because I have three bobbins, so I decided to do three separate spins. I'm doing a gradient um, spin for a sock yarn. This is the thinnest I've ever, ever spun um, fiber, but it's a, a great merino, and it goes from burgundy through rusts um, down to a, a rose camel, uh, and then fades into grays. So it's a great gradient um, color set of fiber. I'm hoping that I can do it justice and and end up with a beautiful pair of gradient socks out of it. We'll see. I've only got one finished object this week and um, what's sitting and what's sitting in my finished object bin is a pair of spring socks. Um, it was a lovely Lorna's laces uh, green and pink um, and white and yellow uh, sock yarn that I picked up and it was just so beautiful. I actually think they were the fastest pair of socks that I ever knit. I finished them up in two weeks and they're so comfy, cozy, just really um, basic Gainsey um, stitches, some open diamond, closed diamonds, and, uh, I, and an alternating uh, rib. So I think they're going to be really wonderful. They're waiting to be given their spa treatment along with a couple of skeins of merino and uh, hopefully I can get to that this coming weekend and have everything um, washed, rinsed and and hanging out to dry. It's been rainy around anyway so it's not like they would dry very fast but it's still nice to get them um, all absolutely done and so I can put those socks into my hand spun sock rotation or hand knit sock rotation rather and uh, have yet another pair to wear because I do so love my hand knit socks. And now a word not from a sponsor. The Homestead Hobbyist making hand dyed fiber for your spinning pleasure. Visit the Homestead Hobbyist on Etsy.com to see the latest in his Savage Blend line. And don't forget to stop by and see him in person at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, May 7th through 8th at the Howard County Fairgrounds in Maryland. Homestead Hobbyist, your source for fluffy balls. Of roving, that is. For the finished spinning bin, like I mentioned, I do have the um, two skeins of merino. One came in at 221 yards and the other came in at 198 um, and like I said that's going to be for the Rhinebeck scarf so hopefully once that gets all washed and beaten up and stretched and dried um, the, I won't lose too much yardage because merino does have a real tendency when you wash it to poof up a lot and if it goes out horizontally you know you're going to lose some vertically so whatever inches that it poofs up um, will be taken off the length of the yarn. So I have been weighting the skeins down when they dry so it doesn't, um, it doesn't shrink it the length too much. But uh, I'm going to have to remeasure that and, and see how we do. Hopefully uh, I'll be able to maintain enough yardage uh, to get the scarf done for the Rhinebeck competition piece because I really don't want to be spinning that brown merino. 
uh, for Rhinebeck. I, I'd like to have a really lovely, just single color cream scarf. In stash up and down this week, um, well, I guess the only thing I really stashed down was the sock yarn, the Lorna Lisa sock yarn. Uh, 400 yards of it chewed up in a, in a pair of socks for me. And then I went over to my special sock bag because we all know that sock yarn doesn't really count in your stash. So I even keep it separate um, in its own little special bag. And I discovered that I'm actually four skeins short for the year. I try and keep 12 skeins of sock yarn in my sock bag because someday my goal is going to be spinning uh, spinning yarn for socks, which I have my gradient going, but it will also be knitting up 12 pairs of socks for the year. And in order to do 12 pairs, you need 12 skeins. And I do not have 12 skeins. I only have eight, and that's including if I succeed at my gradient yarn spin, um, sock yarn spin. So I think that I'm going to have to take a serious look at um, some sock yarn and, and see what I can purchase. Um, it's it's a hard, hard thing to do, but, you know, you have to keep the sock yarn bag full. Who am I to argue with the, uh, argue with the sock yarn bag, right? This week on Road Trip, uh, the Chancellor's Sheep and Wool Showcase is coming up. This is the uh, Claremont Fiber Festival on April 23rd over at the Claremont Estate um, right on the Hudson River. It is a beautiful estate, and they have such a lovely little festival there. A lot of my friends from the Elmendorf um, Guild will be uh, spinning and weaving and... Uh, I understand they're going to have some dyeing going on as well. And, of course, uh, the vendors, vendors, vendors are going to be there. It should be a great time. And I'm probably not going to make it there. Uh, it's from 11 to 4 p.m. But this is the event that I'd like to go to. But most likely, um, Mr. Nitten, Mit, Mr. Nitten and I will not be making the trip out. But it is something to look forward to, and I'm enjoying uh, chatting with my friends on Ravelry about all the exciting things that are going to be there. Um, so that's what the road trip would, would be if I were going to do the road trip, which I'm not. Alrighty. For Grabby Paws this week, um, which is stuff I want, even though I'm probably not going to get it, but a girl's got a dream. Um, I've been looking at CVM fleeces. Now, CVM is, there's, there's the plain white and then there's the colored and I've been trying to, um, find a really good source for a moret or a reddish colored fleece, mostly because I don't like spinning alpaca. Um, it makes me itch and, uh, I don't particularly uh, like wearing it because it makes me itch, which is probably because of the way that I spin it. But nonetheless, I'd rather work with wool at this point in my spinning career. Um, so I was looking at the next best thing, which would be CVM. And, oh, I found some beautiful red fleeces. Um, but they were really expensive. We're talking, you know, $50 a pound unwashed. And I do have, <clears throat> okay, I have five fleeces here already that I still haven't finished processing. So, grabby paws. I would love to get my hands on some CVM, but I don't think that's going to happen at this point. So, that's the stuff I want, but I'm not going to get it. All right, so I guess we're up to dough. Uh, the mistakes I made this week. Um, I'm kind of doing a knit along with the socks with um, with Kath. Hi, Kath. Um, and so 
I'm trying to act like I know exactly what I'm doing and I never make a mistake, but as we all know, everybody makes mistakes, even the mitten. So I was went through the, the cast on for the toe and, and worked up the increases for the toe. And then for my foot, after I knit the length of the toe, I usually like to increase two or three stitches on either side um, just for the ball of the foot to give it a little extra space there um, because I find it just, just a bit more comfortable. So since on these socks I'm doing the eye of the eye of partridge on the back of it the eye of partridge pulls the knitted fabric in so when I did the sock increases there was two large I did them one two three instead of one knit a few rows two knit a few rows three knit a few rows so there was too much of a pulling on the um, fabric so it looked really wonky like like there was a a stitch that got knit twice every four four stitches or so, and it was just um, horrid. So I I ripped all that back. That was about three inches, and then I felt so confident. I just plunged along and uh, got all the way to the heel, and I worked. Then I tried them on, and I worked the heel. I'm doing a no wrap um, heel on this, and when I tried them on afterwards, after I'd finished the heels, I just, both heels, mind you, and I tried them on, I discovered they were about a quarter inch um, too short for my comfort zone. So I ripped out both heels. So now I'm back to uh, going around for the length of the foot, and I think I'm going to knit a little bit extra and see how that goes. I, it's the the no wrap heel is a little bit um, shorter than I anticipated. Um, so instead of having your two and a half inches for that you would have in a heel flap, um, you only get uh, about an inch and a half with the no wrap heel, or that's what I'm getting on this particular yarn. So those are my doughs. Both resulted in tinking. We're knitting back, um, and we'll just continue forward and keep going on with the socks. Hopefully I'll make some good progress with them. Alrighty. Where you can find me? Well, I'll be teaching a sh tatting workshop at the Elmendorf Inn in Red Hook um, this Saturday from 10 to 4. Uh, I'll be providing all of the materials that you need because I know that most people don't have tatting shuttles and thread uh, readily available. Um, but it's a free workshop sponsored by the Elmendorf Guild, of which I am a member. And uh, I've gotten a great response uh, so far for attendees. But if you're out there and you're around Red Hook um, this coming Saturday, the 16th, um, I hope you'll stop by and uh, give tatting a try. It's a lot of fun. I learned it when I was uh, quite young and uh, have the doilies and bookmarks to um, prove it. Um, but it is a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to teaching. So hope to see you there. Okay. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.